Hey, welcome back to Square Body Stuff. We got your old buddy Stumpy here giving me a little introduction because they won't let me turn wrenches on his pickup up trucks. Uh, there's probably good reason why. But hey, you're going to have to excuse our background noise because we're getting some much needed rain out here in the Ozarks. And the weather's kind of cooled off. We're getting some good rain. So I apologize for the background noise, but the show must go on. All right, now here in this video, we're going to finally be hooking up this here nitrous kit that he bought for this thing. Whew, man, I can't wait to drive it. I don't know if he'll let me drive it after what I did to it in that little burnout video. It didn't get near as hot as what he said it did. It wasn't no 280. It's like 250. But still, yet, if he was a better mechanic, that stuff, that there belt wouldn't have came off on me. So I blame him for that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know what all kind of garbage he's got here on this table all set out, but ooh, it looks good, looks expensive, and it looks like a lot of fun. But I'll let him explain that what this stuff does. I, I don't know. Just got a bunch of wicked magidgets and doodads and, and some. I don't know. It looks like kind of some rocket, rocket ship type stuff to me. I don't know. I just like to drive the truck and go have fun. Maybe he'll let me take a little test trip in it once we get whatever this is hooked up. I don't know. Get some rocket fuel or propane or I don't know what this stuff is. I, maybe it's that nitro stuff he's been talking about. We'll turn it over to Chad there and let him explain a little bit more about what this stuff is. All right. I'll go over what we got going on here on this table. Uh, I still apologize for the background noise. Not much I can do about that. Just got to keep plugging along, moving forward. And this is the time I've got to do this kind of stuff. So here we go. Uh, what we've got is the uh, Nitrous Express. That's the Mainline 1000 or Mainline 1000 kit. Just kind of their base entry level kit. Uh, it comes with everything you see from the bottle over. Of course, you got your 10 pound bottle, uh, your switch, other fittings. The only thing not here is the push button activation switch. This switch is your arming switch. Uh, you flip that on or off to turn your whole system on or off. But the actual button uh, is already in the truck for the remote starter setup that I got set up in a couple videos ago. Uh, you got your solenoids. Uh, lines for your solenoids, the uh, go fast little pills there. This this kit comes with the jets for I think 100, 150. Uh, let's see. Hold on a second. Let's just look here. 100, 150, 200, and 250. So we'll start out with a hundred shot just to get the feel of things. There's your plate. You have your your nitrous side and your fuel side any of those that don't know exactly how these work I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up there's little holes drilling in there the top holes are for your uh, nitrous side your bottom holes are for your fuel side and when those solenoids open up it just sprays the fuel and nitrous down into your intake of course you got your bottle clamps and some, uh, I believe it's Dash 4 AN line. Now here's the extra stuff I bought that didn't come with the kit. Of course we got a gauge for the bottle. Uh, activation switch uh, for the throttle. I'm going to have this hooked up to a wide open throttle switch. So I don't have to worry about monkeying around with a button to make the nitrous come on. It will only come on uh, with full throttle. And then we've got the purge kit that I'll hook up so I can purge the bottle into uh, the atmosphere so I don't get any air in the lines or something like that and blow the truck up. This stuff over here is for the fuel side of things. I've decided to run a standalone fuel system. I've got a bunch of Dash 6 line, a bunch of Dash 6 fittings, a couple fuel filters, uh, the fuel pump, I believe it's either 110 or 130 gallon per hour fuel pump just for the nitrous setup. So I have plenty of fuel for the nitrous setup. And I'll try to remember to put down in the description uh, below for like part numbers and everything I've used. 
So, and also, while you're down there, check out my uh, Teespring store where you get my merchandise. Uh, also, click that subscribe button. Uh, ring the bells for, you know, you'll get notifications if you ring that bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, for whenever I post a new video, you'll get a notification for it. Uh, before we get started with the nitrous kit, I just want to show real quick, we got some new wheels and tires. On Squeaky, finally got some skinny wheels, they're five inch wide. Uh, yeah, they're actually trailer wheels, but I don't think it's going to be any problem. Uh, pretty much all I'm going to have them on there is for the drag strip. Uh, no street driving, anything like that. I may take them for a drive just to make sure they're balanced and all that stuff. Uh, but I live on a gravel road, so I don't want to tear these tires up going up and down the gravel road every day. Well, not every day, because I'm driving every day. But anyways, I did weigh them to see if there was a weight difference between these wheels and the wheels that were on there. Uh, and there was quite a bit of difference, actually. These are steel, the ones that are on there are aluminum, but the tires are smaller, everything else. So there's uh, a total of like 22 pounds difference. So we're saved 22 pounds on the front end already. So that'll help a little bit and a lot less rolling resistance. So that'll all help towards our time. Still gonna be slow. It is what it is. It's a 305 with a four speed. But we're having fun with it. Because race truck. Now, in trying to find and figure out where I'm going to mount this nitrous kit or the bottle and the extra fuel tank, I decided I got these uh, side boxes. I had them out in the old lean to on the barn in storage. I'll clean them out and everything, but I'll put the bottle in it and I need, a, I need to find a little fuel tank. But for right now, I'm just going to try to find some sort of little fuel tank to set down in there. Uh, just for the fuel side of the nitrous kit. I've got five gallons of 110 race fuel that'll be running for the nitrous side of things. Uh, that should help out. So let's get started installing this stuff. All right, first thing we're gonna do is pull the old carburetor off of here. Start the fuel line. One of these days I'll uh, upgrade my fuel line set up. I really don't care much for it. It's kind of hokey, but it works. Bottle linkage. Return frame. Back in line. I don't want to go to manual brakes, so I don't have to worry about that. Alright, as you see, I've got a big two inch spacer on top of my intake, so there's kind of a down shot of that. Uh, it, it, this is just a, a get me by, not something I would really suggest 100% doing, but as per everything else with this whole project, it's kind of budget minded type stuff. This is the intake I had sitting on the on the wall with some other intakes you see over there. Uh, I didn't have a, a good open plenum intake like I really need for this application. Eventually, I'm going to get one. I've been looking at a few, hoping to find one real cheap on on the marketplace or something like that. But for right now, to kind of give like, me more plenum volume, I put that two inch spacer on there. So I'll have to make my own studs, or longer studs, to be able to put this blade on for the nitrous. 
Now if I was just to put this nitrous plate right down without the spacer, it would probably get in the way, uh, that divider in the intake will get in the way of my spray bar. I've also thought about just putting a one inch spacer underneath this, getting rid of two inch, just use a one inch and the nitrous plate. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go with what I've got right here, make some longer studs and roll with what I've got. Whether it's right or not, I don't know. But that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and install the appropriate size jets and just going off the chart on the back side of the destructions here. I need a uh, number 41 on the fuel side, which there's a little 41 on the part number there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But there'll be a, the numbers right there. That will go on the fuel side. And then for the nitrous side, it'll be a number 52, which will be this jet. And all the jets are just a metered orifice that has, you know, different size hole in there. And to install them, you take the jet and like that. And then your tube will go on like so and you'll have to make sure you get it in the proper direction whichever way you're going to put it and then tighten that down and that's that's how you install the different type of jets uh, on the other end of your tube you'll have a compression fitting which consists of your compression nut your ferrule whatever you want to call it i've always called them ferrules and then your fitting and this is a 3 16th uh, tube to a 8th inch NPT or National Pipe Thread fitting. And this is what will go to your solenoid. This is our fuel solenoid. It will thread into that. Now I'll put some thread sealer. But you don't want to use like thread tape or anything like that. Because if you get a little piece of that thread tape in that solenoid it'll it'll mess everything up it'll ruin your day and also on my nitrous side of things this mess right here is the nitrous solenoid and the purge solenoid this will be the actual nitrous solenoid for the plate and this one here is the purge solenoid and i'll be going over that in a little more detail all right so we're working on the nitrous side of things uh, this is the actual nitrous solenoid that goes to your plate that comes with the mainline kit. And I'll have this fitting here. It's eighth inch pipe thread. It'll go to the outlet side of it. And this is what goes to your uh, 3 16 tubing here. You got a compression fitting on this side. Then to connect the purge solenoid, which this is everything over here that comes with the purge solenoid. You got your switch which is just a button that you'll push whenever you want to purge it. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some of this thread sealant, get all my fittings where they're supposed to go, and I'll show you kind of the finished product. I've got everything pretty well mocked up the way I want it. Got my jet in here that I need. Got my tube bent around to where it'll clear everything. I've decided to put it on the pasture side. This is actually the nitrous solenoid. Your line coming in. And it goes to your purge solenoid, and this will come out to wherever you want to purge it to. Uh, but I got it. The way I did to clear, this will come out just on the pasture side of the distributor cap. And Because if I would put everything on the driver's side, it was going to interfere with my throttle bracket that was going to be on this side. So I decided to move everything over to the pasture side. Got everything clear, so I'll get it kind of mocked up on the engine and show you what it looks like on the motor. All right, here's the nitrous side of things. Just kind of, everything's tightened up. I don't have the carburetor mounted down or nothing. You see I've got my line going back. Got my purge line coming up. It'll go up to a squirter up here. Out the hood. And come down underneath. I've got the line run. It's going to run along the side of the frame rail. i got to get something to fasten it to the frame rail. I'm going to run on the outside so it's not anywhere close to the exhaust heat. And then going through a hole in my floor. 
I was able to chew a hole through the my high dollar plywood floor here. I've actually got enough line. I could run my boxes on the back side of the fender or on the back side of the bed. I'm not sure if I'm gonna run them here or up towards the front. As far as looks go, the looks it'd be better up towards the front, but weight distribution, it'd be better to have some weight back there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I decided to move them to the front of the bed. Looks a little bit more legitimate of like a work truck, maybe. I'll be putting the nitrous bottle on the back side of this side. Some sort of fuel cell up here for the fuel. On the other side, I will eventually be putting in a battery back here. And, but for now, I'll probably use this side. I can put uh, something in there for some ballast, for some extra weight. Get some weight over this pasture side tire. So now I just need to work on getting the tank mounted inside that box with these brackets. It's just going to have to use some, use some self-tappers probably. Run it down through there. Get it all measured out, fastened in there, run my line, got a real hole through the bottom for the line, get my gauge set on there, and that'll pretty much wrap up this, uh, the nitro side of things. Open that up, there it is. Got my gauge in there, so I can read it. Don't pay any attention to that hole. That hole's not supposed to be there. Uh, I was just kind of eyeballing things, and apparently my eyeballs are off about two inches, so. Oh well. I've got my line running down through there. Should be easy enough to get in and out. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be with it being kind of tight quarters. But other than tidying up some of the lines, uh, running them, getting them set where I want them, uh, which I'm not going to do until I get all the fuel line and everything in. Then I'll start buttoning that start stuff up. But for right now, we've got the whole nitrous side of things hooked up, except for the electrical. Uh, the electrical is going to be the last thing I hook up. Uh, next, in part two, we'll be going to the fuel side of stuff, hooking up the fuel pump, the fuel lines, uh, the fuel solenoid on the, on the plate, and see what happens there. The part three will probably be the electrical. So... Y'all stay tuned, keep your square bodies rolling, and we'll catch you later.